Hjärtligt välkomna hit. Vad kul att se er alla, så många. Jag heter Hanna Söderstedt och är projektledare för Filmrummet. Och idag ska vi alltså prata om filmer från Sapmi. Sapmi. Och ja, det ska bli jättespännande det här. Och det hade inte gått om inte ni två hade varit med. Så att, och vi har fått ihop ett sånt fint program också. Så vi hoppas att ni också ska bara bli nöjda med det. Och innan jag lämnar över ordet så bara lite praktiska saker också. Vi kommer mixa språk lite. Svenska, engelska, samiska. Och sen när det är slut vill jag bara säga så kommer det bli en cinemateksvisning här efter. Så att man får vara ganska snabb ut. Men bara för att man går ut behöver man inte gå hem. Utan man kan hänga kvar i, i foajén. Ja, mingla vidare helt enkelt. Så nu lämnar jag över ordet till Sara. Yes, hello. I'm going to do this in English since we have some international guests here in the audience as well. Uh, I hope it's okay with you all. Uh, I just want to say I'm very, very happy and very pleased to be able to organize this um, afternoon together with Anne Laila from uh, ISFI, the International Sami Film Institute, and uh, with Hanna from Filmrummet. Um, we there is a lot going on right now. Um, um, there uh, it, today was the last shooting day of the Netflix production Stolen. Um, Next week there will be a premiere of uh, the Swedish premiere of Let the River Flow, distributed by Focus Bio. Um, today we had the final session of ISFI and Netflix Writing Academy um, with a pitch session and a masterclass with Malte Forsell. And that's a training program for writers um, that has been organized by Netflix together with ISFI and Alma Education. Uh, you're going to meet later on some of the participants, the screenwriters. Um, and yes, what more to say? We have not so very much time. We have a very intensive program. And uh, it's also really nice to see that there are so many here in the audience. I will encourage you later on to also ask questions and participate. Um, I see um, also things that are recent. Uh, Thomas Jackson is here, who made the film Historia, Sting for Sapmi, Amanda Chanel, Peter Birro, who's a screenwriter of Stolen. So I think we have also a chance to have a nice discussion and talk. And I want to give now the microphone to um, Anne Laila Utsi. It's been lovely working together with you. So please. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Monica Gulla Beth Kodimo. Hello. Um, ja, både bei vi bruker det både erket, men om alle Anne Laila Utsi. Ja, men den samme i Philip Maj Institut. Ja, de har gjør. Hur som är det här det nu är lugnt på att den dejke ande. Yes, uh, Anne Laila Utsi is my name. I am the managing director of the Sami Film Institute, and I was um, my uh, one of my colleagues, Lisa, who is not here today. She and ev every time we are doing an event or talking, she always asks me to yoik, and I think this is a good day, as uh, Sarah said. Uh, it's a, it's a really, it has been a wonderful day today with an uh, amazing day at Netflix after the great collaboration um, we're having with them. So I, it's just a short yoik, and I'm not a professional yoiker, I'm a kitchen yoiker. I, I learned from my cousin a few yoiks, and this is, these are the ones I know. So uh, I, I want to start with yoiking Fimbenalla, who is, um, she was the sister of my aunt, who was married to my uncle. And she has um, a very cool yoik, so... Um, and for those of you who don't know what the yoik is, it's a the tra traditional song of our people. So you can yoik people or mountains or the wolf or anything. So this is Fimbenalla's yoik. <laughs> Karalagam fimbenala, jalalolo, lelolelola, no, the 
Sarnei, se on kirkku jo lilo, lo, 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 lo. Kiihtuu. Thank you. Thank you so much, Annelaila. And I'm sorry, I gave you a microphone, but I already had one. I didn't think of that. Thank you so much. We're going to start now with the show reel. We're later on also going to hear more about ISFI and everything that you are doing. But here is a uh, show reel. From Sami Films. to be able to present to you the legendary filmmaker Nils Gaup. We will soon meet. He made uh, his debut uh, feature 1987 that was nominated for an uh, Academy Award and has a long career um, behind him and in front of him. Uh, in the fall, his uh, new film will premiere. I don't know the title. There is no title yet, but we are looking forward to that. Uh, Nils uh, started out as an actor. He's also co-founder of the first uh, Sami-speaking theatre in Norway. And uh, yes, there is a lot to say uh, about you. You've also been active in Hollywood and um, 
I'm I'm happy. I, I think we should give a warm hand to Nils Gaup. Thank you, thank you. I'm really happy to be here uh, in Stockholm, the hometown of one of my favorites, Greta Thunberg. Okay, uh, I think I'm, I'll, I'll have to take you back in time, uh, far back in time. Um, when I was a kid, we didn't have television. My entertainment was storytellers in the old culture. These are live storytellers. They were like movies, but without a screen. Uh, when I told stories, everything was created up here. It was like virtual reality, but without the glasses. So these stories were so captivating that I still remember them. Uh, but then came television. And before we knew it, everyone was glued to the screen, to television screen. Um, shows like uh, uh, A Family at War, uh, Gunsmoke, The Fugitive took over. And uh, the suddenly, before we knew it, like that, the story, a rich story uh, telling, telling tradition was gone disappeared forever, and a new type of life entered our homes. We, they come into our, our homes, we had, we had to learn the culture, a new way of seeing things. There were no storytellers, there were just these this cold screens, and inside that there were people. So, uh, and there was a lot of news, we knew exactly what was, what was going on in the world. And uh, as a teenager, I grew up in a world that felt like it was going to explode any moment. Uh, the threat of nuclear weapons during the Cold War were terrifying, especially for me living so close to the Soviet Union border. So um, we, I had to find comfort in music. I had a friend who had this, this fantastic new modern sound system and on that system, we uh, used to gather around that sound system and listen to the records of that time. Like Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, uh, yeah, Deep Purple. Does anybody know those? How many? Wow, okay, okay, that's great, that's great. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but I didn't have, it, uh, I didn't have this, uh, that kind of system. The only thing I had was an uh, old squeaky radio. That's what we had home. Um, and I remember sitting alone in the kitchen. I was like 14, 15 years old, depressed. I was kind of depressed when I was a young, young, young kid or young teenager. And sitting there in the kitchen thinking of oh, what the, uh, the future might bring. And then, all of a sudden, I discovered the transformative power of art, of music, that come through this radio. It was just a song, but it caught my attention and pulled me in. So, uh, the technical quality of this uh, radio didn't matter anymore because I was so absorbed in the music. And, uh, when the music finally ended, uh, I sat there in silence, feeling uplifted and deeply moved. In that moment, I realized the incredible power a simple song can hold. And that's when I became a believer. I became a believer in art, a believer in music, a believer in storytelling. So I finally ended up becoming a filmmaker. Now, many years later, when I was uh, 
thinking of that situation. I was planning to write the screenplay. Uh, I found out why the reason why I, this music hit me so hard. And it was because that was exactly, exactly what I needed to hear at that time in my life. So how many know this song? Oh. Yeah, it's still, it's still around, right? You can still hear it. Yeah, it's a fantastic song. So when I was planning uh, my first film, I wanted to tell a story that spoke to me personally. Uh, something I needed to hear. And uh, back in 1980s, the, um, it, that was the first time the evidence of climate change became known. And the Sami culture was almost invisible. And uh, the destruction of nature, was, that was commonplace. Uh, there was even plans to put an entire Sami uh, village on the water so they could build a, a power plant. And of course, people started to uh, protest against that, so the Sami voices started to, to, to get heard. But 1980s was also a, a decade when action movies were dominating the screens. And I was just as, as anybody else, a fan of films like, uh, like Rambo, uh, the Terminator, Top Gun, Robocop. These were the movies dominating the screen at, uh, the time, at that time, and I wanted to make an action movie. The, but the competition was really hard. Uh, so I had to go back, I had to, I had to make, make something that I knew I personally needed at that time. So I went back to the stories I heard in my childhood. Um, and I found, I remember one, one uh, story, and that was a classical Sami legend called the, uh, the Pathfinder. So, and at that time, I didn't know anything about structure uh, or movies. I had never heard about three-act structure that people are talking about all the time this, in this, these days. The only thing I knew was uh, the plays of Shakespeare and, uh, and Ibsen. Uh, and they were based on five act structure. So I decided to make my movie as a five act structure. So Pathfinder is really five very different stories put together to one, one film. So the problem at that time, of course, was that nobody wanted to hear Sammy, Sammy uh, stories or see a Sammy film. That was like auto question, totally auto question. But I, I had learned that you can't sell a movie by telling people it's something you need to see because people don't know what they need to see and they don't want to be preached on. So you have to give them what they want and then you have to kind of sneak the need in so they don't, don't see it. Now in, uh, in, in Pathfinder, the main now, the main character wants revenge against the villains who killed his, his family. So he goes to, to war against them. He will kill them, everyone, of revenge, the feel of revenge. But he loses the battle, uh, and all his friends are, get killed. Everybody is killed. And he is captured and forced to show the way where the, uh, the rest of the army people are hiding. Uh, so, his original plan failed, and now he had, must change his way of thinking. And this is where the need comes in. And this is where I think the Sami stories were so great. Uh, because, because you have to, uh, in, during a story, they have to change their thinking. And this guy, I guess everybody knows him. Do you know who this is? This might guy. So, um, no, uh, the main character in, 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 uh, in, uh, in Pathfinder is all alone against an overpowering gang of bad guys. And the survival of his people is at stake. And he's the only one who can save them. What will he do? What will he do? Yeah, the story forms this audience becoming a great success. I'm not bragging that it's true. Uh, and I don't think it's... Book it it's not because it was a, a, a Hollywood film. I think the film worked because people needed that story in that specific time in history. 
That's what I believe. And if you were to make this kind of film uh, today, it would be very difficult because nowadays cinemas are more like theme parks, offering stories based on established concepts like Star Wars, Justice League, Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, Spider Avengers and Batman and so on. And these are big entertaining films that have been successful before, so the studios know that this will work. And there's no place to other movies these times. Uh, but what kind of films should we tell today, show today? That's a, that's a question. Uh, I guess we all remember when, when Notre, Notre Dame uh, caught fire and people from all over the world uh, follow this catastrophe. Now, Notre Dame is known as a place we associate with seeking peace, uh, reflection, and perhaps connecting with uh, something that's bigger uh, than ourselves. Uh, Notre Dame is built on the story of Jesus, which is known as the greatest story ever told. There is even a, an, American, an American movie with that title, a big, epic film. Now, fortunately, everyone reacted really fast, so uh, Notre Dame is now almost completely restored. Uh, imagine entering a cathedral, a sacred place where we find peace, reflection, and connection with something that's greater than ourselves. This cathedral is, gives you spiritual meaning in life, and this cathedral provides you with everything you need in order to survive. Food, water, fresh air, joy, love, everything you need. Only through a story will we be able to identify with people in that cathedral. We will understand their values, their connection to their nature, and then, and only then can we understand their suffering when disaster strikes. These stories come from cultures that have first-hand experienced the devastating effects of climate change and destruction of the Earth. And these stories come from all over the world, in rainforests, in waste tundras, in the Arctic, everywhere where, where people live. Now, I believe that we need to see these stories in the future. Netflix is the largest streaming company on the planet. They certainly know what kind of stories work and what kind of stories don't work. The, the Sami Film Institute is called the Sami International Film Institute, not only because uh, Sami people live in four different countries, but also because they have a direct access to stories from all around the globe, from indigenous communities. I believe that this co collaboration will bring these stories to life like never before. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nils. Um. Nu ska vi titta lite längre bakåt i tiden på just hur eh, Sápmi har skildrats <coughs> på film och eh, tv. Och bilder som inte alltid har varit en del oproblematiskt. Eh, I forskningsprojektet Samisk audiovisuell samling <coughs> har man just gjort detta. Sett över äldre eh, film och tv på detta eh, och samlat in en massa rörligt material. Eh, och för att berätta mer om detta så välkomnar jag upp på scen Mats Rodin, projektledare på Kungliga biblioteket och Malin Nygren, enhetschef på tillgängligt filmar på Svenska Filminstitutet. Välkomna! Hej och tack för att vi får komma och presentera vårt projekt. Jag ska börja med att summera det i stora drag och sedan så ska Malin visa lite här på skärmen hur det ser ut. 
Projektet heter i sin helhet Samisk audiovisuell samling, filmer och tv-program i arkiv och på webb. Och projektet avslutades nyligen 2022 och påbörjades 2019. Och de som har medverkat i projektet är Aite, Svenskt fjäll och Samemuseum i Jokkmokk. Samitingets kulturnämnd, det är de, som, man kan säga, de två som har haft ansvar för, för det samiska kulturarvet. Vi har Kungliga biblioteket och Svenska filminstitutet med ansvar för det svenska audiovisuella kulturarvet. Och sedan så har vi också haft medverkande från tre olika lärosäten. Umeå universitet, då är det Vardå, Centrum för samisk forskning. Sen har vi haft också medverkan från Stockholms universitet och mitt universitetet. Och projektet har haft fyra delmoment. Inventering, tillgängliggörande, metadata och etik. Och framförallt etikfrågor har, har genomsyrat projektet i sin helhet får man väl säga. Eh, när det gäller inventeringen så har vi funnit då, och då har vi letat efter filmer och tv-program som innehåller någon form av samiskt innehåll eller samiskt relaterat innehåll. Och vi har hittat ungefär 550 filmer och 8600 tv-program. Eh, när det gäller filmerna, då, de här 550 filmerna, eh, filmer som helt eller i stort sett nästan helt skildra samisk kultur, samiskt samhällsliv eller om det är spelfilmer på olika sätt. De är ju lätta att finna givetvis, men det som är projektets styrka skulle jag vilja säga det är att vi har funnit en mängd, en otal filmer där det samiska kanske är en liten del av innehållet. Men nog så viktigt många gånger när man studerar det ur ett större helhetsperspektiv. Det gäller framförallt filmer som har passerat den svenska biografcensuren. Men det som vi också har lyckats hitta mycket av, det är filmer som inte har passerat censuren. Och det är alltså företagsfilmer, föreningsfilmer, myndighetsfilmer och privatfilmer till och med. Så det är det som utgör de här 550 filmerna. Och till de här filmerna så har vi också producera ett ny innehållsbeskrivning utifrån ett samiskt perspektiv. Så vi har gjort som så att vi har haft katalogisatörer i IT i Jokkmokk som har sett de här filmerna och sedan skrivit om filmen innehållet utifrån ett samiskt perspektiv. Och även försökt föra in då, eh, specifika ord och uttryck beroende på vilket samiskt område som filmen utspelas i. När det gäller TV-programmen så har vi inte haft samma möjlighet eller samma resurser givetvis. Däremot så har vi lyckats tagga åtminstone eh, nyhetssändningar med vad det är för typ av, av nyheter som relaterar till det samiska. Så allt detta finns samlat, de här 550 filmerna och 8600 TV-program i nuläget. Det finns samlat eh, hos Kungliga biblioteket i söktjänsten Svensk Mediedatabas. Men där krävs det ju särskild behörighet det är för forskare, journalister och andra. Så andra, alla har inte tillgång till det. Alla har tillgång till metadata så man kan gå in och titta vad som står om olika filmer. Men däremot inte spela upp det via SMDB som det förkortas för Svensk Mediedatabas. Så ett sätt då att kunna föra ut de här filmerna, en stor del av filmerna i varje fall som vi har försökt, för detta var också ett, ett viktigt önskemål framförallt från, från Sametingets kulturnämnd. Och det är att eh, försöka sprida filmerna via någon annan plattform så att det kommer det samiska samhället till del, det goda. Och det är då som vi har den här gemensamma plattformen, då Kungliga biblioteket och Svenska filminstitutet. Vi har något som heter filmarkivet.se. Och där har vi publicerat nu i dagarna eh, ungefär 150 filmer och det är det här som Malin ska berätta lite mer om. Ja, tänkte jag att jag skulle ge er en liten guide på sidan. Ska vi se. Fel håll. Escape först. Så, escape först. Och sen så 
så här ser det ut. Så egentligen vill jag ju bara välkomna er att gå in på sidan och titta själva. Men jag kan visa hur det ser ut. Här är första sidan på filmarkivet.se. Om det skapas ett nytt tema så småningom så kan man hitta det här temat liksom framåt. Här, satt mig på film heter det. Vi är väldigt noga med att berätta att det här är filmer ur ett majoritetsperspektiv. Det är historiska filmer som vi ju inte ändrar i utan det är för att lyfta historien. Och med tanke på att återta sin historia så är ju historien viktig att ha eh, kunskap om också. Eh, filmerna är uppdelade utifrån samiska områden, språkområdena. Eh, jag tänkte att jag ska visa en film. Om vi går in på sydsamiska området till exempel. Eh, så finns det här då om man vill visa mer. Så är det en text utifrån varje område. Här ser ni, det här finns på varje sida något som vi kallar för etiska rekommendationer. Eh, och det är två A4 där vi beskriver hur man ska tänka om man vidareanvänder materialet eller när man bara ser på materialet själv med tanke på dess innehåll. Eh, så det finns texter här som Mats har skrivit och som... Så här, da, 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 da. Och så kommer man ner och så ligger filmerna här. Som Mats sa, det vi har kunnat publicera här är över 150 filmer just nu. Här är till exempel olika veckorevyer från Sydsamiskt. Jag ska gå in på nästa sida. Så. Tänker den lite. Tänker lite till. Och när vi publicerar, kan jag säga det under tiden, när vi publicerar sådana här veckorevyer så klipper inte vi dem. För det är också ett bevarande av äldre material. Så det kan vara helt andra saker som ingår i de här också. Men någonstans i de här filmerna, då kan man se i de här undertexterna, så eh, ser man då vad det är eh, som har eh, ett samiskt innehåll. Jag tänkte vi skulle ta fram en veckorevy från 1933. Eh. Och titta på den, bara så får ni se lite hur det kan se ut. Och då om man läser texten, då handlar det om Roosevelts lönekodex och modellbåtar som kappseglar bland annat. Men så man går ner här och samerna går till Kungs. Vi ska ta fram den biten så kan ni få se. Ja, då ska jag... Oj, det var lite då. Här, någonstans. Selma Lagerlöf innan. De här visades innan film visades på eh, biograferna. Som nyhets. Det är en stumfilm så den ska vara tyst. Sen kommer det något helt annat. Så stannar vi där. Men som ni förstår, det finns otroligt mycket material eh, att titta på och eh, fundera över och hur historien ser ut. Och vi är jätteglada för samarbetet med KB givetvis som vi har den här sidan tillsammans med. Eh, vi jobbar med tillgängliggörande filmarvet på olika sätt. Och att vi har kunnat göra det här tillsammans med sametinget och, och få ett samiskt perspektiv på materialet är jätte, jätteviktigt. Men om ni ändå när ni är där och tittar och tycker och tänker någonting kring materialet så får ni jättegärna kontakta. Jag är chef för avdelningen för tillgängligt filmar och Mats har satt ihop materialet. Så att kontakta oss bara om ni har frågor eller vill veta mer. I de etiska rekommendationerna så står det också hur man kan tänka om man vill använda materialet vidare. Så de känns viktiga att man läser om man går in och använder materialet. Men det här är en sida som är fri och gratis för alla att titta och botanisera er i. Du har något du vill säga. Just det, för jag tror att jag glömde säga vad kollektionen heter i Svensk Mediedatabas. Och den heter nämligen Sapmi på film och tv. Och avslutningsvis också vill jag säga att vi håller precis på och är i slutfasen på en omfattande forskningsantologi. Där vi både med samiska och icke-samiska författare medverkar med 
olika specialiteter. Så den kommer att bli färdig och ges ut Open Access till hösten. Så. Bra. Tack så länge. Yeah, now I would like, I will switch to English now again and I would like to invite um, Anne Laila Utsi and Nils Gaup and Maria Bolnangu and Egil Pedersen and Benjamin Harris on stage. Please have a seat. <laughs> so, so just a short, I mean you will talk more and introduce yourselves later, but just Briefly, Maria Bolnangu and Egil Pedersen, who are uh, screenwriters and directors who have been part of uh, the Writing Academy that has been going on for 12 weeks. And uh, Benjamin Harris from Netflix, who is responsible for the training programs. He will tell you more about that later on. And Anna Laila Nils that you've already met. And we will we will have a discussion, hopefully also together with, with you later on. Um, I think it's also important and good to have this context to look backwards and to see the history and mainly focus on the present and on the future and all the wonderful things that are happening and going on. So I will uh, leave the word now for um, uh, Anne Laila and Nils to tell us more about the International Sami Film Institute. Please. Yeah. Um, so uh, I don't know if... Um you here in the audience know so much about the Sami Film Institute, but so I'll, I thought I'll start with a, like a short introduction, just looking a little bit back because uh, it's already um, many years ago since we were established in 2009. And um, to tie what happened then with what Nils did in 1987, uh, Nils was really the like, he he was um, walking the deep snow for all of us who came after because he proved that yes there are people who want to see Sami films, and when we were a few who had gone to film school at that time and we tried to fund our films through you know the national film institutes and we still got the same answer Neil Scott when he was fighting for Pathfinder and they said who wants to see a Sami story. Uh, so then we thought, well, if nobody wants to support us, we will do it ourselves. So that's why we established the Sami Film Institute. Uh, and we got 1.5 million Norwegian kroner, not euros, uh, <laughs> in 2009. And I called to Nils and I said, now we have a film center, so what do we do now? And then he said, Le let's do a film course and script writing. And I remember Nils came and we had six or seven writers. And um, yeah, that's how it started. And and the first years we focused very much on capacity building. We had script writing courses. Nils was, was with us all the way until today. Now he's a film commissioner at the Film Institute. And uh, so producers, uh, education, um, and directors courses and a lot of yeah focus on uh, capacity building and then in 2014 we did seven sami stories which was really a game changer at that time it was a, a short film series with some of the directors are here like egil and maria and and who else uh, yeah anyway so and this this short films traveled really well all around the world and and that's when we also started with uh, after that we said okay let's start working on feature films um so um so that was like also a new crossroad uh, and for example egil and maria you are both working on on feature films and many we have around 10 15 feature films coming now the next years and also drama series um so the establishment of the Sami Film Institute has been really crucial for uh, the development of Sami films, even though we don't have all the millions and billions of euros yet, but <laughs> we will maybe someday, uh, now that we are working with Netflix also. So <laughs> I will talk with Benjamin about that later. Uh, but, uh, uh, but we do have all the good stories and the incredible talents. And like today, when we had the pitching at Netflix, they've been had this really intensive uh, writer's course over three months and just nailed the pitches. And 
I think Netflix was very impressed. I think maybe they want to make all of these. We'll see. <laughs> but um, so um, so Sami Film Institute has really been like uh, Ardan. Ardan is the Sami word for a fireplace, where you know people have been telling stories uh, for like times immemorial, and also Sami people. So it's it's a place where our filmmakers can gather. Uh, because we are spread ac across four countries and so even though we don't have all the big funding yet so but we do have a place where we can meet and where our filmmakers can connect and where Netflix can visit and and yeah so yeah it's really exciting and times and now like after 2009 from 2009 until today um, the new generation and what you are seeing now and yet what you will see in the coming years, this is the result of, of a lot of hard work and a lot of talent and a lot of good stories. So I think that's where we are at now. So, yeah. Thank you, Annalena. It's also so um, interesting. You mentioned that also, Nils, with the international collaboration and with other indigenous communities and can you say something about that also because I think that's really incredible how you work also internationally uh, yeah we um, from the very beginning we uh, um, and it's it's also a tradition in the Sami community like politically the Sami people has always been for a long time been working together with other indigenous peoples through the UN and the Permanent Forum for Indigenous Peoples, and um, so that has been with us from the very beginning. We did the Indigenous Film Conference in 2011, and Sundance came, and Berlin Film Festival, all our Indigenous film uh, friends from all over Canada, US, New Zealand, um, and of course that is important on so many levels. It's creatively really interesting to work with other Indigenous filmmakers or writers because you have the same background, the same challenges, you can start off like on the same ground and you don't need to explain uh, anything. And then of course also it opens up to co-productions, funding, audiences, so there are a lot of um, like advantages uh, around that. And we have also established a Arctic Indigenous Film Fund which is now um, starting to fund, uh, we have funding from Canada, from Brazil, uh, some philanthropic uh, support, so, yeah. Great, thank you. Is there anything you want to add, Niels? Because you have been away and you have come back, now you're a film commissioner at the Institute. No, I, I, I believe in uh, Hitchcock. <laughs> and Hitchcock said that there are three things you need to make a great movie. And it's number one, a great screenplay, Number two, a great screenplay. Number three, a great screenplay. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the reason why we've been working so hard to, uh, to test and, and, and you know, find, figure out how to tell stories. Lovely, thank you. Talking about screenplays, I will now give the word uh, to Benjamin Harris. It will be very interesting to hear you tell us more about um, the focus on development of talent and screenplays and the training programs that you are providing. Yeah, th uh, thank you. I'm, I'm very privileged, very honored to be here to uh, sit next to you at the Aran, is that right? <laughs> um, and uh, uh, it's, been a, it's been a wonderful collaboration with Anna Leila and the International Sami Film Institute. When we first um, talked, um, I asked Anna Leila, so, you know, we'd love to support you, what can we do? And the, first, the, the thing you said was, we need writing, a writing workshop. And I thought, oh, okay, that's very, that's very involved. Um, but uh, um, I was a little, my, my thinking was, well, yes, of course. I mean, that makes perfect sense because it all starts with a writer. I mean, if we, if we want to tell stories and, and Netflix and here I'll, um, talk from the Netflix point of view, we want to tell stories that speak to a local audience. We want to talk, uh, we want to make uh, Swedish content for Swedish audiences, Norwegian audi uh, content for Norwegian audi audiences, Finnish content for Finnish audiences, Danish content for 
you guessed it, Danish content. But part of that, part of that culture is also the Sami culture. We shouldn't forget that. And we believe that our audience is very diverse and we want to include that diversity in the content that we do. So we essentially want to tell stories that haven't been told before, make sure that we make that for an audience that is appreciative and receptive. So for us, it's, uh, for us it was important to figure out a way how we can tell these stories together and make these stories. So it's been a great privilege to work with these amazing writers and see them develop their ideas over the course of the last three months. And uh, yes, it was only three months that they had to write these screenplays. Um, I'll let them talk about that experience. But uh, I think sometimes the most amazing creativity comes out of uh, a lot of, um, let's, put, let's call it pressure cookers. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'll let uh, you guys talk about that pressure cooker experience. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, i never been asked to write a full screenplay in 21 days. But this was also the, one of the best gifts as a screenwriter I ever had because, um, uh, it, you know, you learn to make a fast decision and you see, oh, some of them are actually good and it's a good way to shape it. Or uh, what do you have any other thing to add? Yeah, I cheated a little bit because I have a co-writer. <laughs> uh, so I uh, co-write with my sister, Inger Boll, a sister. Um, so, uh, of course, it was very, very intense. Uh, but I think uh, it doesn't really matter uh, when you write it, because either way, uh, you go into this bubble. And this bubble doesn't have a time zone, at least not for me. So for me, it was uh, a very good experience, actually, to be granted the opportunity to go inside of this bubble for these three months that went as fast like uh, this. It's, I, I thought like we just started yesterday. Uh, so it was quite absurd when we were like pitching today. I, I looked at my fellow screenwriters and thought like, wow, now we're here. <laughs> and it just started. Uh, so yeah, for me, it was like a no time space zone. Would you say, I think it's so interesting that it's such a wide, I mean, the genres, the, the themes and the stories that you have presented today, it's such a broad variety of, um, of different, uh, but if you would say something about like what you find, do you find something that is like a red thread or something that comes coming back or that you can see like coming out from, from the stories told by, by the Sami writers? Yeah, I think we actually discussed it together. Uh, what? Yeah, it was rage. Yeah, but also one more rage. thing. Rage. Yeah, but one more thing we discussed together. I don't know. Uh, I don't remember who it was, but uh, we were a group of uh, of the writers who talked like, are all the stories about very strong women or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Like every story we have done in this uh, writing group is only about super strong women. So that was quite cool. But uh, and then we discussed like uh, in the hall. Yeah, but it's not that weird. Some women are super strong. So of course, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think, I mean, also that's so many, uh, everybody, I think all the stories are so brave. They don't, you do, they, we do all what comes from our heart. It's not like we want to try to go for some trend or something. I think we all have something, it comes from some somewhere inside. And all projects are like that. Add to that, that's um, like what we have seen uh, from the Sami Film Institute, because of course, we are reading a lot of the the stories and the wonderful scripts. Um, and all the stories come from this very strong urge uh, to tell our stories. Because we really haven't... Well, Nils has had the chance to do that for <laughs> a long time. But, but you know, uh, that we haven't really had that possibility or, you know, the doors haven't been open for funding at the, you know, National Film Institutes until very recently, like Amanda Kernel Sami Blood uh, here, supported here at the SFI. Uh, so it has, it's, it comes from this very strong urge to, to tell our stories and, um, and maybe narrative, um, uh, self-determination that that we want to define our 
history and our present and our future. So it's, you know, breaking this tradition of everyone else telling about us. I think a lot of energy comes from that. And that's what we are seeing now, which is really, really exciting. And that's where all the stories take fire. And yeah. Yeah, I just also want to add like how important uh, all the Sami filmmakers are for each other too. <laughs> like Amanda Canel's Sami blood opened the doors for everyone. Yeah. And I just want to, if I can sh share a sh short story for you guys, <laughs> because I've never been on a panel with Nils. I, he has been my mentor many times, but we've never been on a panel. But like uh, the first Sami film I saw ever, I was like four years old. I saw uh, Offlash, the Pathfinder, on the television back home. And uh, since it was on TV, I thought, like, he gave me the false uh, reality of, yeah, Sami films, they're on television. And that's totally normal, yeah. Uh, and I remember um, my dad, he's uh, uh, from a, a village near uh, ESFE, a conservative village. So it was one part of the film. He covered my eyes. And I was very, very little. And the thing I imagine inside of my head was very brutal and I never saw that again in the film <laughs> so <laughs> I think like uh, that shows kind of how important we are for each other because uh, that moment gave me the belief that it is quite easy to be a Sami film director <laughs> and yeah. in a way that the false belief stayed quite long with me it was only when you kind of uh, are done with film schools so you understand the reality but then it's like you always also uh, are going somewhere so then you're not like stopped so yeah, so I think we are very important for each other. And now Egil is doing his uh, first feature film this summer. So he's going to also open new doors with his uh, comedy. You should pitch it now. Go. <laughs> <laughs> are you the new? <laughs> okay, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she does, does this all the time, I mean. Every all the time we sit in this panels. Now it's about this um, a fifteen year old girl, girl. All her life she has uh, learned that her mother got pregnant at a Danish fertility clinic. She's a Sami girl living in a Sami village up the north. And the mother comes very late in life. She comes out of the closet as uh, a square and finds and, the, and she gets a girlfriend. The girlfriend moves very quickly in together with the mother and daughter. And the daughter like. I don't mind that you have a woman, but it goes it's a bit too fast. So then she's not so interested in her Sami identity. More, sh she's more interested in her half Danish identity. So she <laughs> kind of like goes for the. Well, she want to embrace the the Danish identity. The, um, and she learns that in a way she's it's not completely as good as he, she hoped for. <laughs> so it's kind of like an identity satire, satire for uh, young, young adults uh, um, uh, about the Sami identity, minority identity, uh, queer identity, f parent identity. Uh, yeah. So in the cinemas next year. Thank you, Egil. We will later on also invite um, the other participants of the Writing Academy, and I will ask you also to just give a glimpse into your 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 stories. Um, if we continue, I think it's so interesting also just having read your listened to your pitches now um, that there is um, something coming back. It's also like the the ego, uh, the egoistic, and in relation to like doing something for the greater cause or. Um, and also something that I'm been thinking of is also the relation you have also to the to the history and to the older generations and to the relation to nature and in a way that we are, um, you know, that I think is more important than ever um, today to care about and to think about like what is around us and what is important and what really matters and also the emotional um, to be able to tell these stories who have the the universal um aspect of like what what is it like to to be a human on this on this earth but if you're thinking about um uh what is my question now if you're thinking about um i don't know like visions for the future or like what you're hoping for and uh both on a personal level but also thinking about your community and the the future for for some oh uh yeah the future um i think it's like to show more of the Sami that people don't 
think about it like outside the summer community like to because even sometimes when meeting uh, national film funds you still get this feeling that they have this prejudice idea about what, what a summer film should be and not should be and it's like that's something we still have to like fight and i think it's the more films we will make we will show a variety of what about what a Sami film can be and should be. And I hope, and I think that's something, and I guess that just comes for, for all, all Sami filmmakers. You have anything you want to add? And you tell, and, <laughs> and you tell now what. <laughs> yeah, I think like we're so diverse as Sami filmmakers, and that's really, really cool that, uh, like, just from our academy and we have so uh, different so diverse stories from each other everyone has the sami story uh, but they are so different in genres and uh, ways of telling and i think uh, the future uh, is not about dreaming or hoping anymore now the filmmakers together with anna Laila, actually have we have stepped out the road this is now ready to go on the road we have we have made every block and every every like path on that road so I don't think it's about hoping or dreaming no more now. Now we're going, Ashley. Yeah. I, if I can add to that, yeah. I, um, I totally agree with my, what you are both saying. And, and it's also, we have a vision at the Sami Film Institute. So what we, um, we did this nice strategy work uh, two years ago. And we made this very nice vision that um, we want to build a Sami film industry that is sustainable and also globally attractive. And I think we are, like Maria is saying, we are already there. Like we have now the first uh, Sami film um, coming up at uh, Netflix and, and so many uh, feature films coming up. Uh, this year only we have three premiere, uh, feature, feature premieres, uh, many going into production. Next year a big drama series, also cut in uh, the wedding party, uh, many more feature films coming up. Uh, so I think the future is, and it's also about why we are doing it, that I think for us, um, because of the history, the colonization, the assimilation, we also have this urge and need to also, you know, save our language and our and our culture and our land, traditional ways of life. So it's it's all connected. You are talking about the connection to land. So and that also shows in in so many of our stories, maybe not like directly, but it's also always there, uh, very present in, in different ways. And that is also um, very very interesting and and important and like you were talking about in your talk that that the crisis that the world is in now the world really needs uh indigenous stories and these stories that are connected to nature and um for example in norway the Folsom demonstrations the the green colonialism um so so we really need these stories for, for a global audience and and that they are relevant and they are needed. Yeah. Yeah, and also to add on, just like Sara was saying, uh, to quote my own pitch today. Uh, <laughs> no, it's like uh, from a, like a Western society, you can choose of the egoistical uh, versus the versus doing what's good for the greater good. But in the Sami, we don't have this opposition. When we Samis are egoistical, uh, when we kind of want to protect our lands for our own use and for our reindeer and our culture, it actually benefits the greater good of the world. We are protecting yeah. land that needs to be protected as nature. So that's also kind of a big difference between the Western and the Sami culture that's also connected like uh, of the, like the film world too. It's a direct correlation there. Did you want to say something? No, uh, <laughs> just breathing. I'm, I'm listening. So, I'm all ears. Yeah, I'm just wondering also, Benjamin, uh, since um, I think it's so great what Netflix is doing with these training programs, because there are so many people in the industry and producers talking about the need for new talent and to give space for new voices and to to take risks and to dive into the unknown and to to see you know what's coming out when you don't really know from 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 before, um, but if you, what are your visions? What are you 
wanting to achieve with these training programs? Because there are a lot of programs going on. It's not only this one, but it's also around Europe. Yeah, I mean, um, our division, Grow Creative, is essentially um, uh, about um, building up the talent pools in different markets where Netflix is doing original production. And for us, it's, it's important uh, as a company we're easily seen as the, F, uh, as the outsider coming in, grabbing all the talent and just kind of uh, depleting the market. But we want to give back to the market as well. We want to help build up crews and um, educate and train crews and, uh, and creative talent um, to benefit not just us, but in fact the entire market. So, um, of course, we would love to do all the, uh, all the, all the projects that were pitched to us. But, uh, I mean, you know... The reality is, is that we actually don't do a lot of productions per year. So, um, if we, so the chances are, it's probably. Um, my hope is that these pr uh, projects will land and be made, either at Netflix or somewhere else. So for us, it's important to build the um, the writers and the directors, and build a long lasting relationship. This is not just about this one project. This is about getting to know Eagle and Maria and uh, also Katrin and uh, Inge and Elin and everybody in this and Mikkel and everybody in this program. And maybe it's the, maybe it's this project. Maybe it's the next one. Maybe it's the one thereafter. But the idea is we we want to be in this for the long term and uh, invest in this market and in the culture um, and. Frankly, we want to be part of this culture, too. Thank you. We have a few minutes left. I really would like to invite also the other wonderful participants from the Brighter Academy on stage. Please come up so you at least can say hello and uh, <laughs> show yourself. Hello. And... If you want, I mean, now Egil and Maria, you were speaking a little bit about your projects also, but it would be so nice just to hear a little bit about you. And if you want, you can say something about your project or just specifically about the themes or the... Well, my name is Ozu Katrin Wolab. I'm, uh, I started acting as a child and uh, then I discovered writing. And uh, that is my true passion. And... Uh, I have this need to tell stories about dysfunctional families in a weird <laughs> way. So that's the general like theme of my stories. And uh, this film that I've been writing is like a Tarantino-esque action movie where there's a lot of blood and killing and very sexy violence. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I I enjoy entertainment in films and TV series, so that's truly my focus. But at the same time, I'm like Nils sneaking in some political views <laughs> with covering up with humor and jokes. So, <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm Ingrid Paul. This is my sister Maria. We write together. I'm a script writer, and I don't know. Do you want to tell something about our script or? Yeah, we have written. Uh, <laughs> this is quite normal. She always says, yeah, you do it. <laughs> and now I can do it to Egil. <laughs> no, but uh, we have uh, written about uh, a woman, a Sami woman in her late 30s, who has a big family. Uh, is set in a, another uh, reality, but at this time. Uh, but there, she's trying to survive... Uh, uh, Sami genocide, where they have uh, uh, started this uh, genocide because they have started a fake green shift to take the remaining uh, Sami land, um, and then they uh, uh, have mass slaughtered all the reindeer. Uh, and uh, we follow Inga and her journey to survive this genocide. Yeah, so it's a quite like. Uh, raw and dramatic, but they also have uh, very funny elements in it, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Hello, my name is Mikkel Bergnolia. I'm a Sami historian. I'm writing a story that takes place 1,000 years ago. Some call it the Viking Age, but we could call it also a Golden Age of the Sami. This is before the Sami lands were colonized. They were free, and the people who lived there governed themselves. And the story kicks off as one Norwegian king decides he wants to change that. 
He thinks it's time to claim the Sámi lands for Norway and forcibly Christianize the people who live there. But there's someone up north who, who learns about this and decides to stop him, and that's a chieftain's daughter. She's willing to do anything to stop him from accomplishing his goal. So this is a story about a Sámi hunter and chieftain's daughter who decides to take on the king of Norway. <laughs> Hi, my name is Inga Elimarakat, and uh, I've been writing Monetiera one. Uh, it's a mysterious drama with horror elements, and uh, it's about uh, forced migration of the Sami people. <laughs> well, I'm short, so it's okay. <laughs> So uh, my name is Lisa, I'm from Kautokeinu, uh, where also uh, Nils and Anna Laila and I've uh, been working in documentary for many years here in Sweden in the TV house just down here and it was when my boss proposed that I make a series, documentary series, where we let Swedish celebrities compete about becoming the best Sami that I decided <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> Uh, and Anna Laila called me and I came home. Uh, so I'm writing a story uh, from a little town, a coming of age story. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the main character is uh, on a football team, a girls football team. So it's a coming of age story in a small Sami town. <laughs> Not celebrities. <laughs> Thank you. I know that there are some questions. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no worries. Yes. <laughs> you said, yeah, then you had to like <laughs> take the lead, you know, as you always do. <laughs> Else it doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you. Um, yeah, I'm doing uh, a comedy TV series called writing. Uh, it's called Cod Heads Only, about uh, five siblings who can't uh, agree uh, how to settle the inheritance after their mother. And their mother is still alive. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you. We have a few minutes left, and I know that there are questions from the audience, so I, I will leave, leave it up to you now to take the chance. Hanna has the mic. Or yes? Thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. My name is Cecilia Jarding. I'm a political scientist and an ethnologist. And I wrote a book, actually, that I just wanted to quickly tell you all about. It's called uh, Diversity in the Swedish Film Heritage. Uh, it was uh, published in uh, 2016, so it was a, a few years back. And um, I, I just want to tell you that it's also about the Samis. It's, it's also about Finnish people, the national minorities here in, here in Sweden. And when this came out, it didn't get any sort of attention. <laughs> so I'm really happy to see that what you are doing now has, has, has gotten so far. So I'm really happy for you, all of you, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you have later on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is incredibly inspiring. My name is Johanna Vesterson. I'm a human rights lawyer, but I, I'm also writing a book about uh, Swedish colonialism in Sápmi. And I would like to ask you, maybe the the filmmakers, um, the the writers, but also Benjamin, what is the role of Sámi language in what you're doing? And how do you deal with and grapple with the fact that Sámi language is so unknown among majority Swedes for sure. I think it's a little better in Norway, maybe. And how do you also pitch, how do you deal with Sami language if you try to make it big? Is it a problem to be very crass um, to do films in Sami language if you want to reach a broad audience? Thank you. <laughs> you can choose which language, actually. <laughs> All of us in together now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't think it's a problem. Sami is n not any 
uh, it's not any worse than other languages. It's actually a little bit better, to be honest. We call our... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Our nickname for our own language is uh, the gold language. Uh, so, yeah, that's our statement. <laughs> Yeah, and maybe I can just add to that, that, you know, uh, thinking in a global uh, perspective, um, Swedish, Finnish, uh, uh, you know, all small languages. So, so that's the beauty of subtitles, and you can choose any language. And actually, at Netflix now, you can also choose some language. So, uh, on, yeah. Yeah, and I do think I do think it's important to stay authentic. So I think all the all the writers have been writing their scripts. We didn't give them any kind of uh, prerequisites in term or, or, or any pre requirements in terms of what language they can use or not use. I think it's all organic to the writing, and it needs to be. And then you know, um, we'll fix it in subtitling. Yeah. Are there any more? Questions? We have three minutes left before we have to run out. <laughs> yes. Hello, my name is uh, Erik Norberg, and I'm the film commissioner for Film Bullnud, Norbotan. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. It's Great, but I would like to hear some more about the uh, the way that the, the the writing academy worked. How did you work together? I, I, maybe I've missed that, but but I give me some some uh, facts. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. We started first of February um, online. It's been mostly taking part online. So uh, we have these uh, seven writers, uh, six projects. Uh, four feature films and two series. Um, we have been working with a lot of different tutors. That is also the way that we work at Alma. We we always try to mix different methods, different, you know, that everyone can find their own way uh, to to best develop their their projects. That there is not one way. There is not one like a guru uh, mythology. Um, so we have had a mix of, of wonderful uh, tutors and uh, two sessions every week, Mondays and Fridays, uh, master classes, feedback sessions, uh, a mix of tutors that also have been, uh, some of them indigenous filmmakers like Tainui Stevens and uh, Denise Goulet. Um, Peter Biru has been one of the tutors, Jörgen Gert who's here in the audience. And so we have, we have created a program where we have gone through the whole development process and uh, have had then weekly meetings um, online and also in uh, Kautokeino, um, so for, for a week up there. So it's been very intensive and the goal has been to, yeah, to finish a whole, a whole script and to go through the whole process. So they have all been working really hard and it's been really wonderful talking about also this like community and and um, to be together and to have this space where you where you share and you meet and you um, you feel that you are together and supporting each other has also been a very important part of the whole the whole process. So um, I don't know if you want to add something, please. Yeah, I want to um, just uh, uh, end with saying that in the Sami culture we have a really beautiful word. It's it's called verte. And Verte traditionally is, uh, for example, reindeer herders and uh, people that are on the coast because you migrate with your reindeer to the coast. You have, you have your Verte water. So it's it's a friendship. It's not. It's a partnership. You are helping each other when you need to, um, and it's also a little bit like family. So, so I am really grateful for the Verte water with Netflix and with Alma and and. Um, and this is also thinking about the film industry. So it's all about collaboration and the good friendships and the good colleagues. And so, yeah. So just thank you to Netflix and to Alma and writers and everyone. And SFE for having us here. It's been great. And, and all of you for coming. 
And also to finish up, it's also been very important as also Benjamin and Netflix has been stressing that it's been the process that has been the important part and not just focusing on the final product, but to really go into this intensive work without, you know, not thinking too much, just write and write and, and work and, and, um, and um, uh, be, be in, the, in a creative uh, process. Nils has also been one of the tutors, and uh, so we have um, we've had a really good time. I'm going to miss you. <laughs> yeah. We are now one minute past half, so yeah, a quick one. Ja, då hoppas jag att det är okej att jag ställer på svenska, och svaret kan både vara på samiska och svenska. Jag kommer från Sveriges Radio. Eh, ni har pratat mycket ikväll om att det är många tidigare som har öppnat dörrar. Eh, Nils har klampat i djupsnö och så vidare. Varför tror ni att det händer så mycket nu inom samisk film? Um, jo, jag tror ju att... Um... Jag kollar mig. Okay. Svaret är Anna Laila Utsi. <laughs> hon har sparkat ner dörrar, hon har brutit sig in i stora hus och tagit plats. Så det är på grund av den jobben Anne Laila har gjort sedan 2009 att vi kan stå här idag. Thank you. Tack och så väldigt väldigt fina ord. Men jag tror ju också, ja, jag har nog sparkat ner någon dörr. Men jag tror också att det här, eh, som kanske Nils också var inne på, det har nog med tiden vi är i. Eh, Om man tänker internationellt och liksom allt som har skett, alltså eh, världen i kaos, eh, Me Too, eh, Black Lives Matter, diversity, representation, inclusion, det är det, det enaste, alla liksom filmfestivaler, branschen, alltså, som har liksom, respekt för sig själv, eh, snackar om. Så det är liksom tiden för alla de historierna som aldrig har fått bli fortalt. Det är vår tid nu. Så. Yes. Är det någon som kan göra ett kort svar på samiska? Jag kan ge ett kort svar. Ja. <laughs> uh, no, uh, kan nog gå andra att uh, uh, Black Lives Matter hon har i... Uh, Golma jag är i. Där levde jag alla ålder. Där ni går några norska filminstitutet, där är det där diversity programmet, där ni går se bollarte. Jag har inte varit där och några allmänlarte där till att jag bokar bäst att åka filmer. Jag måste jag kan att det är några andra där till hur det hela just det där är i. Varkis där jag bokar hela det och en i. Jag skulle lägga en film i. I dag ser jag med filmer mot Alga och Almoga. Jag bor lägga en era gäll besen. Historien låter mig inte lä. Sin ägjas mig inte lä. Så jag måste jag kan dåta lämna mig i revden. Jag nu går också att tänka dig att Anna Laila rappar en allo lösa. Jag gillar mig rappar en allo lösa. Jag vill ha allo lämna en gärkos. Vad jag säger. Jag vill ha mig allo lämna en allo lösa. Gitto. Tusen tack. Thank you so much. Och tack för en jättebra sista fråga. Um, vi måste tyvärr utrymma lokalen för det ska bli visningar. Men vi, we are in the bar. So if you want to speak to us more, we will be outside. Looking forward to speak to you. Thank you all. Thank you.